Hey everyone, welcome back to Playcrastination Population 328, and welcome back to the next episode of the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Today, uh, technically we should be doing a mod showcase since I did not upload last Thursday. Life kind of just caught up with me, and uh, I didn't have time basically. Well, I had time, I just didn't have the motivation, I guess. I was feeling not so like recording, I don't know why. But so instead we're going to do, it's Tuesday and I want to break from that schedule, so we're going to continue with the, oh god. We're going to continue with the Tuesday is the, oh god, oh no, I have mods on. Uh, uh, help, help. I don't want mods on. I think that makes it not contribute to my win streak, but hopefully hope wait, uh, no mods. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. And then, th uh, and then, okay. We still have our win streak. This may start us over and it may re randomize us. I think it will. Uh, and honestly, considering we had three HP on that start, I can't, or one HP, I should say, I can't complain. Anyway, uh, seed's gonna be Hyas, H Y A S 2 K F P. We're gonna start with Soul Relic and uh, the Razor Blade with a 3.43 rate of fire and a thir nope, 13 rate of fire, 3.43 damage stat. The other stats, do they really even matter? I mean, to some degree they do. Speed is fine, it's above average, so we won't have to worry about it. Uh, the other stats really don't matter, though. <sighs> I do not enjoy number two. I think it's generally pretty terrible. Um, I, I see its uses though. Like I, I'm, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm so. The, the, I don't. I don't want to pretend like I'm so much better than the item. To not like admit that it does have its purposes. Like that. Look at that. It cleared out a room pretty well. Um, and it also pretty much means you will never need bombs for the remainder of the run again. Uh, you can, as long as you have the, or are willing to, okay, as long as you're willing to spend the time uh, to take out, uh, to take the time to, to, you know, place them, you'll never have to worry about it again. However, as you saw right there, I have a very common problem of just kind of going into my own dodging mode in my own brain and just thinking about nothing but the actual dodging mechanics themselves, or the shooting mechanics, I should say, of taking on enemy and the other problem is I switch keys often so if you just keep like if you just keep cycling from key to key uh Bob's not Bob's brain um the uh number two will only go off a single time I believe so if I just keep holding this way we shouldn't produce any more poop all right boom but as soon as I let go and I do it again now that I've done that it resets it and as you can see there that time we do produce poop so um, technically as long as you just keep firing after the initial blast, you don't have to worry about like a flurry of bombs, um, assaulting the screen, which is good. Okay. We do not have, um, we do not have a, um, bigger floor. What do you want to call it? XL floor. There we go. I'm so smart. Uh, we do not have an XL floor, which means we do not have to worry about, uh, taking red heart damage, which I don't think we did. Mm. The other issue is that, uh, as I've complained about about a million times for about a million years, my headphones uh, don't pick up the, like, I think it's something to do, not with the game itself, uh, but with my actual headphone jack on my computer tower, and the big issue is that I can't hear sounds in games. Coins being picked up, uh, most of the music except for like the bass line, hoop being shot, and uh, perhaps the worst for this case is that I can't hear the little flatulence sound associated with placing a bomb with number two. Um, which means, as you could see, what... Oh my god, that's bullcrap. Uh, what happened there, as you saw, was that I went to go ahead and place a bomb. Uh, it placed it behind his head perfectly so that I could not see it. Uh, and because I couldn't see it, I ended up taking damage. Uh, so, uh, you know... Number two is one of those items that is uh, very similar to, to Bob's brain in a sense that if you have, okay, if you have absolutely no damage on a run, which we have, I mean, we don't have a ton of damage right now, technically we have subpar damage and subpar rate of fire, if you have that situation, it definitely, just like Bob's grain, Bob's grain, uh, that's uh, if he was ever a farmer, 
Uh, definitely gives you an avenue to deal damage without having to worry about that, which is great though. Tears, uh, our code hanger is going to bring us down to an eight tier stat, so we really don't have to worry about that anyway. Uh, we should look for a second secret room. It's the smart thing to do. So let's go ahead and place a bomb here since we have infinite. Um, I'll check here and that's probably the only place I'm willing to check. Okay. I'll check one more place because I'm a liar. Um, but yeah. So it's good because if you're struggling for damage, you're struggling, or maybe you're also struggling for consumables, sometimes it's kind of hard to find bombs on a run. It, it alleviates that worry completely because you'll always have some. You'll always have some sort of form of damage. Um, the downside is when you're careless like me, so really it's it's not a testament to the item being poor. It's an, a testament to me being a poor player um, that I often take damage from it. So, you know, that's not the item's fault. I really should stop blaming the well you know technically if i'm the one exploding then i'm the victim so it's really not victim blaming i don't really know what you'd call it but uh false attribution perhaps uh i i don't like the item because i take damage using it but i'm not taking the damage solely because of the item i'm taking the damage because i use the item poorly um and maybe that's a better way to look at things okay so burning basement plus curse of darkness Plus this, uh, these farts being on the screen equals I can't see anything. Um, so hopefully we can uh, not have to, to worry about that. Uh, I don't want to use my keys yet because we um, can use them on that double. Uh, we can use them on the double key room, but I want to get into the item room first. And then if we have, you know, two keys at the end of the floor. So basically if we can pick up one more key, then I will go ahead and use them. Secret rooms could be here, could be here. May as well take a peek. Because the secret rooms could contain good things for us. All right, that one does not. Literally, I, like I have to scoot into the, scoot into the screen to be able to see what's going on. Not there either. Uh, okay. Well, got a kind of an interesting situation going on here. Hello. I would like to dodge. Uh, but yeah, just, I mean, similar to Bob's brain. As long as you remember that it is a presence, that it is a force to be reckoned with, then there's no reason you should ever take damage with it. Milk isn't that good. If you take it, it's basically um, holy water. But if you take a hit, you also get a tears upgrade for that room. So, but uh, we don't have any means of re-rolling it. So I think we're stuck with it, unfortunately. Second secret room may be here. The other problem is that you end up, like, these runs take so long. Okay, there you go. Multitasking there. We got the bomb down and we hit the tinted rock. A crazy amount of tinted rocks thus far on this run. Could have used those on the last run and I would have not complained at all. There's our secret room right there. So let's go ahead and check it out. What do we got inside? So maybe we could have rerolled milk. I really don't know how the machines in these rooms function at all. Like, I don't know if you can use them to, um, to reroll any pedestal on the floor or if it has to be a pedestal that's in the secret room, in which case I don't know how you'd get both of those things to occur simultaneously, but perhaps there's a way. Okay, so we place this, then reset the uh, the poops so that we can place one more. There we go, take out the little haunt. Okay, then go ahead and place another one if we could. I'd like to get it up there, but then like, then the other problem is you start focusing so much on your poop placement and your all stuff like that, that you end up not focusing on the actual core dodging mechanics of fighting a character like the haunt. Did that not hit you? Uh, like instead now I'm working at, I'm worried about where my poop is going to be. Um, I mean, it's a common thing I'm worried about just to, on every day, but uh, I'm, I'm more worried about that than I'm actually worried about, you know, where the haunt's going to be shooting. So we could take damage because of it, but we didn't. We'll pick up dog food and in here we will get satanic Bible. Um, it increased our deal with the devil chance slightly, so it's probably better than the razor blade. Now, if we end up getting something like, um, if we end up getting a horror Babylon or anything like that, we're going to regret getting rid of razor blade, but for now I don't. I will go back to the double key room because I said I would. And uh, if we can reroll, I will certainly reroll. Uh, I, th I think I've at least proven myself a bit with number two. So if the game goes, you would you like to get rid of it? I will say yes, I would like to get rid of it. Only if the game decides it though, that's not up to me. That is up to whatever is inside of this room, which is not that. Mm, probably not even worth in the slide. It's like we could use butt bomb, butt bomb, number two bombs to get all of those bombs out of their corners but really we've already spent so much time like eight minutes through the first two floors is pretty dang slow um and so i don't really feel like spending any more time second secret room is probably up here so we'll go ahead and do this real quick grab our second secret room see if we can make something great happen nope i mean we could blow it up but again 
Who's got the time? If you got the time, I got the place. Is that, that's a common phrase, right? I don't know if it's common, but I think it's from like a movie or something, perhaps. Uh, we'll go for Guppy here because Guppy was so, okay. Thank you for doing that to me. Guppy was so pivotal in our last run that I feel like it's only uh, fair to try to give uh, Guppy another shake. Okay, we get a, feel like I'm walking on sunshine. Uh, and a power pill in the same room, so you know at least we figured out two decent pills that we have. I'd like to place another butt bomb, please. I'm doing most of my damage with butt bombs right now. We will take store key. Uh, we will also crank on that one. It's probably just that one time. Uh, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm using the butt bombs as most of my damage right now, mostly because our damage stat is 3.43. Um, I really can't complain about that though, because did you guys watch the last run? If you watched the last run, then I don't have many grounds to complain about damage or tier stat ever again, because that was one of, for, for a long time at least, was one of the worst runs I had ever participated in, um, to date. And, uh, I'm honestly just perplexed and amazed that we even managed to survive it. Uh, happy that we did, don't get me wrong. Okay, taking damage, that's okay. Uh, but as you can see here, we could use some help. Although we did get hit, so the milk is gonna activate and we are gonna get a little bit of a, um, a tears bonus from that down to six. Now, the tears bonus is nice, but we still are struggling in the damage department. So overall DPS is still pretty low. Although as you can see there, it's not bad when we get a little uh, butt bomb proc. So I need to actually like, Give butt bomb a little bit. Gut, not, it's not butt bombs. It's number two. You place butt bombs. I need to give number two a little bit of credit because honestly, uh, I think we may have another. I wouldn't say a train wreck because an eight tier stat is fine to get damage done. Three point four three is only slightly less than um, than your average start anyway, so it's not really that much room to complain. However. Uh, certainly glad that we're, we have at least some other means of doing damage because it's making things go by quicker, but if we want to get a crazy damage upgrade, no, we're going to go defensive instead and get the wafer, which besides Holy Mantle, may be the best, uh, defensive item in the entire game. It's a, you know, it's a contentious debate for sure. I would willingly debate any man and or woman that would like to make a case for, for some other item, you know? I know there's a, a large crowd, Seraphim's fine. I know there's a large crowd that is a huge fan of, um, mm, shoot, Scapular. A lot of people say Scapular is perhaps one of the best items in the game if you can get down to a half red heart, because it basically is like a holy mantle on every floor, because you get one hit for free on every room, I should say. Uh, you know, I don't think it's as good because you have to be at that half heart to get the bonuses from it. So you lose me a bit there, but I at least see where you're coming from. Check for a second secret room there. We find it infested. Uh, guppy number two. Nope. That's okay. You know, we just became guppy last time. Hive mind is good. So we will go ahead and take that. And, uh, now I am more motivated than ever to try to become guppy because, uh, I mean, if the infest, uh, hive mind plus guppy is a great combination. Why did I say infestation? Do we have infestation? No, but infestation and hive mind, also a great combination. It's a little toasty in my room right now. I'd like for it to cool down. This is my way of suggesting to you fan, hello fan right above me, not, not, not fan watching this. <laughs> home of, home of, what's it called? Homophones? Two words that sound the exact same, but have different meanings. No, that's like C and C, like C, a body of water, and C as in to look with your eyeballs. Those are homophones. <laughs> I just had to spit out a beard hair in my, my, my apologies. Uh, my biologies. What is, I guess, I mean, I guess it's literally just a word that has two meanings. I don't, it might also be a homophone. I have no idea. Um, however, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not talking about you guys, the fans watching this video. I'm saying the, the air producing, air current manipulating device above my head. If you could just crank it up a little bit to 97, I would be a happy boy because it would be a little bit cooler in here. That's okay though. It didn't seem to hear me. All right, we're not quite that far in the future yet. I understand. Maybe someday. I'm sure somebody in the world is rich enough. That's what's like crazy. Somebody in the world is probably rich enough to own that. And that's like, I mean, it's kind of related, but not actually. I was thinking the other day about how, I mean, it's very cool that we live in this awesome 21st century where, you know, stuff exists. No one makes you larger, please. 
it's very cool to live in this 21st century where you know all this stuff already exists and you don't have to worry about uh you know it not existing like you know from cell phones to medicine i don't care if you want to go trivial or you want to go actual things that are super important however for for someone like me who as a kid I was obsessed with inventors. I have no idea why, but like, I did, well, I did a book report on Thomas Edison and he, mm, I think still probably does, holds the record for like most patents of all time in the United States um, for inventions. Now, <laughs> people say he stole a lot of them, but uh, I digress. Uh, he still has them. Anyway, he's known as, you know, one of the first big boy inventors. Oh, one of the first for sure. I'm stuck on a rock. Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. All right, we've taken a lot of damage in this room, so I'd like to cut it out. Um, he's known for as being, you know, not like the father of invention, but one of the main inventors of our time. And uh, I mean, it's not really our time, it was his time, but um, I, for some reason, was always fascinated by that as a kid. I have no idea why. I really wanted to be an inventor. And you know, maybe if I would've stepped up my game as a kid, Maybe it would have been plausible to I almost got hit by that bomb because I couldn't hear it Maybe it still would have been plausible to get something like that done now Literally unless you want to invent like flying car or car that runs on spaghetti like some crazy scientific invention You're probably like if you think of something it probably already exists like I, I Part of that makes me wish I could go back to like, you know, the 1800s or whenever these certain things were invented and be like, hmm, kind of tired of wiping with leaves. It'd be very cool if we had like a piece of, you know, cloth paper type of thing to, you know, clean ourselves with after using number two, the item which I'm currently using. Uh, and some dude invented toilet paper. It's that simple. Th that doesn't take a genius to go, hmm, leaves really don't feel that good on my anal sphincter. It doesn't take a mad scientist, crazy rocket genius electrical engineer to come up with that. Now, if I wanted to create some sort of, I mean, even like, even like the bidet, which is just an advancement of the toilet paper, sort of. Still no damage upgrades, I can't help but notice. Um, even that dude, also I could have used Book of Blast. We kind of only had a damage upgrade, but I would like like an overall damage upgrade. Even that dude that invented the booty really is just like, hey, I really don't like toilet paper either. What if water shot my anal sphincter? Like, what if we could just shoot some water up there? You think that's possible? It's not that hard, you hook a hose up. And so like, even though that's a little more technologically advanced than toilet paper, it's still, you know, I, I at least like to think that a person who of my intelligence could come up with an idea like that. Now, what's the next logical step? You went from leaves to toilet paper to uh, the bidet. What is the next logical step? Oh, it's a robot that um, comes over and does the wiping for you with a squeegee and a brush. Okay, well, yeah, I can't invent that. I can't invent a butt wiping robot. Oh, what about um, food uh, that is genetically modified so that it doesn't create uh, you know, waste. Uh, also, no. If Monsanto could do it, that'd be cool, but I doubt it. I don't think they're gonna be able to, to do that one. And if they can't do it, guess who certainly can? This dude's in his room by himself in his mom's basement. All right, you wanna hit me one more time? Uh, certainly that's not gonna happen. Other logical conclusions? There are none. That's the only way it could go. And so, like, everything today is just, like, I feel like everything's been invented. Although, then I see, like, like infomercials and I'm like mm, maybe there are still stupid things but that's you just gotta like some of the things luckily like when other okay like when other crazy inventions happen you as a less intelligent person who maybe like so for example people are like I need to communicate better what's a way we can do that better than you know landline phones or something and then the cell phone is invented that's great I could have never programmed a cell phone I could have never done that me personally, we may as well harm it even though we had a free thing anyway. A present is literally just a free item. So let's go ahead and pop it out here. And we get Scorpio for poison tears. At least it's kind of a damage upgrade in a way. Um, so like the dude invents a cell phone, which I could never do. And you go, cool. It's, you know, it's a cell phone that it exists. It's a piece of technology, but 
Then, you know, later on you go, oh, well, I, I don't want to just do a cell phone. What if it was a camera too? And then someone invents a camera. I also could not have embedded a camera into a cell phone. It's not something I could handle. Let's go ahead and fight our boss, get our deal with the devil here. Um, it's not something that my brain could handle. Unfortunately, I wish it could. You know, maybe if I applied myself a bit more, I could learn. No, probably not could ever learn that. Um, but, okay. Then comes along, okay. We want a phone with a camera on it. Okay, that now exists. Well, I want to be able to take a picture of myself easier. Some dude literally invents the selfie stick, which is literally a stick. It's a long stick to put your phone at the end of with a little aux port that'll take the picture for you when you click a button. That is something I could handle if I was thinking about it at the time, I feel like. So luckily, when these other crazy technological inventions are invented, then the less smart individuals like myself could maybe uh, scalp an invention or two off of them. We get a quarter. We get a quarter. That's great. Um, you know, maybe I could scalp an invention or two. So like, you know, when flying cars inevitably become a thing, which they're going to, the Jetsons is a, is a non-fictional piece of literature that, you know, is just a little bit ahead of its time. We just don't know it yet because we haven't found time travel yet, but eventually it will be a thing as well. And, oh great, Amberlynn, Yana, Shauna. Yana Shauna just added me on Facebook. Guess what? Probably not a real person. Um, but... <laughs> But, uh, so when flying cars become a thing, you have to think, you really gotta be thinking like inventions ahead. So when the flying car is invented, what do I foresee being a common problem of the flying car? What's a common problem associated with flying cars? Well, mm, what's a common problem associated with planes, you may ask? Well, I don't know because I don't go on them that often because I don't travel. Common problem associated. Okay, bad example. Let's think of something else. You know, uh, freaking. Let's let's assume that you know eventually your car can run on spaghetti. Like I said, I don't know why that would be their most required fuel source, but it's a great fuel source for the human body. So why would it not also be a great fuel source for el coche? You know what I'm saying? Hello, I'm trapped. Um, it it re reasons to be assumed that it could also be a decent fuel source for a car. Let's say that becomes a thing, but everywhere you go, it smells like Parmesan cheese, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Maybe it smells like gar garlic. Well, then easy. You create air fresheners that are based on the scents of Italy. Very simple. Oh, this one's Florence, and it smells like uh, cheese and, and whiskey. And then you create... This one's Rome. This smells like um, Gladiator's Blood and also uh, Ezio Auditore. Uh, you create all these different scents, which, uh, you know, really would probably never be popular. But if you tell people, well, you know, if you're a little embarrassed about your car smelling like uh, Parmesan cheese and garlic, well then, boom, there you go. Now it makes sense. Oh, it's just the sense of Italy. Also, my car runs on spaghetti, so hop off. Also, though... I really hope cars never run on spaghetti. It would make little to no sense. I mostly said it as a joke. But if they ever did, could you imagine? Like, I'm the visual imagery of going to a gas station. They look the exact same. They have the pumps. But instead of gasoline coming out of the pumps, strands of spaghetti in marinara sauce with meatballs and... All the fixins, Parmesan cheese, whatever you put on your spag. The thought of that creeping out of that nozzle instead of gasoline, that's enough to keep a man up at night. Anyway, in the item room we get infamy, so this is definitely a defensive run rather than an offensive run, which I hate. I really prefer uh, more glass cannony type runs where you have uh, crazy damage and low HP. I, those are much more high stakes, more, more intense, more exciting. And also generally a lot quicker because either you die, okay, cool, because either you die or you win. Like, you either win very quickly or you run out of HP so you die. Instead, we have a run between, like, between Gimpy, Infamy, Soul Relic, and uh, the Wafer. 
I think there is zero, I'll even say negative perhaps, chance that we actually end up dying on this run. Probably. We just have too many things going for us that are going to keep us alive. Maybe we'll fight uh, Mega Satan. We have too many things going for us that are going to keep us alive, so I really just don't see it as likely that we end up uh, dying on this one. Now, it's going to take a while if we're continually doing 3.43 damage through the entire run, but that's okay. Although I am taking a lot of damage now, so maybe I will be eating my words soon. I don't really know. Hopefully not. If we're having this much trouble against Dark One, it definitely does not bode well for the future of the run. Who's the second enemy here? We got little Loki, or regular Loki. That's no big deal. Um, but again, we're just going to be like getting, like we're taking half damage even beyond this. Plus, we're going to be getting a Spirit Heart every four rooms. Plus, sometimes when we get hit, we're going to be getting a Spirit Heart. Plus, sometimes we're going to be not getting it because of Infamy as well. Plus, blah, 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 blah. The list goes on and on. And so I think we're probably just too defensive to die. But I just hate to tell you, but it's going to be boring for the next, like, mm, probably 20 minutes. as we, Unless we get some damage in a deal with the devil or, or some way in the like. I think it's just going to be really boring for the next 20 minutes. Uh, though I will think we will get the win. So, at the, you know, at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. If you're going for a streak, then all that really matters is that, you, you know, another win gets put down in the win column. Which I think probably will occur here. Now, this fight is obviously going to take a long time. If we can get a couple choice bomb placements, that would be epic. But it's not looking likely currently. Because uh, mom keeps falling down. And, like, to get in the place where we need her to stomp down near a bomb, it's going to require us to get next to the bomb ourselves. And we'd probably end up just taking damage anyway. So, like, probably just shooting her is probably the best idea. Rotten Baby uh, with the Hive Mind is actually a great combination. And we do finish the fight. We get a deal with the devil. Please bring to fruition what I just said. What I said has not been brought to fruition. We just got saved by Infamy there, so that's good. Get a Joker card, which I will be taking, so I guess... Excuse me. I guess, uh, forget about the Mega Satan. Hello. Hello. I will be taking... Oh, could you have imagined, though, if it was Guppy? Then it would have went quickly. Uh, I think you gotta blow up these. You may as well, just because you have the means to. You may as well check for Perthro. And if you can get Perthro, man... We cannot get per throw, but that's okay. We will take Krampus's head because it's at least going to make boss fights quicker. Take the Joker card with us, and uh, now that we have Krampus out of the way, we have a guaranteed at least one more deal with the devil. I'd like to think we could get two, uh, but obviously it's going to depend on if we get one on this floor or the next floor, and we can use it on the cathedral, or if that doesn't happen. Literally, those are the only two options that can happen. Now, one other good thing about, as you can see right there, about number two is it's kind of like doorstop. Just, you gotta uh, with, withstand a little bit of damage for a little bit longer. Like doorstop, you can exit instantly and just be like, all right, I'm out. This is kind of like that. You, you know, you can place a bomb at the door where you first came in and evacuate, but it just takes a little bit longer. Please help. It takes a little bit longer to actually do that. So I probably won't be using it for those purposes. In here, we will become Guppy, so there's no... Okay, well, there was all... Really? Oh, never mind. I thought the bomb came over and hit us, and I was going to be a little upset with uh, the way the world works. But it, that's not actually what happened. Okay, Infamy once again has saved us. I, I got trapped between, like, basically a rock and a hard place, except for it was more of, like, a bloody cyst and an explosive place, which is... You know, actually what the original phraseology was, but people were a little uncomfortable by, well, pretty much every aspect of it. Um, but no, we were trapped in between a butt bomb and that guy, so I pretty much just had to stare him down and hope he didn't attack us. He did, but Infamy said, I understand you're between this, a rock and a help. I understand you're between a rock and a hard place. Let me go ahead and just help you out here, and here's a freaking super suit. Not like the super suit from... Uh, Whatever his, what's the, what's that? Incredibles, which, you know, where's the Incredibles 2, man? We've been waiting. <laughs> you said we could, you said it would happen, and it hasn't yet. Pixar? Is it Pixar that makes those movies? I can't remember. It's been so long since I saw the first one. We may as well do the same down here for this other golden chest, just because Guppy's head could be in it. And at this point, I think there's no reason to not try and exhaust 
any and every option possible to become Guppy. Obviously, it didn't work out, um, but it's really no big deal. We lost two keys, which as long as we can get two more keys before we get to the uh, right three more keys before we get to the cathedral then it's no big deal because we're just gonna you know at peace be able to open those four chests anyway um, so as long as we can get the the keys required then it's really not a big deal okay I also know I could have been checking more and more secret rooms than I have been I've been doing a pretty bad job of staying up to up to par la okay infamy once again I've been doing a pretty poor job of staying up to keep a tabs on secret rooms and stuff and checking for them. Mostly laziness. I mean, I, th I feel like it's pretty well established of how lazy a piece of garbage that I actually am as a human being. That's okay, though. Okay, so we're going to fight our boss here. It's Mr. Fred, Mr. Tim, and we get about halfway done, which means the rest of this fight's going to take a while, but, you know, it's still at least 50% faster than it was originally going to be. If we can get these rotten baby flies in here as well, that is also huge. And then these bombs that are going to be doing damage, also good. Please, though, I need the fly to connect. Okay, the fly just really... I must smell poorly because the fly really is not interested in assaulting him today. There we go. Get it done. We do get a deal with the devil. Nonetheless, a tears upgrade brings us to six. And please, please, please give me some damage. Give me some damage. We get Sack Dagger and we get Brother Bobby. Neither of those that good. Um, Sack Dagger at least is another form of doing um, damage. Uh, so that's good. Um, like if I end up using it in that regard, you know, I can use it, which I probably honestly will because I'm tired of like not being able to kill anything so i probably will use sacrificial dagger at least sometimes like when it makes sense to do a little bit excess damage brother bobby is technically also excess damage so while ooh, while we haven't received a single damage upgrade blank rune it was does nothing for us while we haven't technically received a single damage upgrade this entire thing we've technically received i don't think you would call them passive <laughs> damage upgrades I usually call them secondary damage upgrades meaning just their alternate sources of dealing damage that technically increase our DPS as a whole um, but don't affect our actual damage stat you know in a in a in a statistical sense um, I definitely prefer the ones that help us in a statistical sense but uh, you know if the game's gonna give me one or the other I really can't complain as long as we end up winning that's again, I hate to make everything about that, but really at the end of the day, that's all that I care about is putting win number 21 on the board. Also getting a couple more keys because we do want to be able to open um, all of the chests at the end, which uh, as much as I originally said, it doesn't really matter that we wasted these keys. It's starting to look more and more like it may. Uh, so hopefully we'll get a natural deal with the devil here. It's unlikely. But, uh, all right, I thought we still had Book of Belial, so there goes a lot of damage. You know what? In fact, I'm really willing to just tank this and, and get some damage done with Sack Dagger. And really, we didn't even put ourselves at risk, with it, which is great. Uh, we don't have Curse the Blind, correct? No. So I think we should Joker card here. Horror Babylon is a damage upgrade, so I have to take it. I can't take anything else because it's going to put us too low to for me to f remain feeling comfortable. And we'll head up to the cathedral. Hopefully find uh, three keys uh, along the way while we're up here. Whew, that would be awesome. Mm. Does it smell like rutabagas to you guys? <laughs> I don't know what a rutabaga smells like. I don't even know what a... Is a rutabaga real? I've kind of just always went under the assumption that it is because I've heard the word said before. But I'm sure there's plenty of words that I've heard over the course of my lifetime that were completely fake and didn't exist because people just say things. Like, even if it was on, you know, like a piece of media, like maybe I heard on like a freaking TV show or, or a movie or something like that, or I read rutabaga in a book. Is it a food? Is it a vegetable? Rutabaga. No, this is important. Please stop. Please stop everything you're doing right now and allow me to goog allow me to goog a search. Ruta Rutabaga. No, not Prutabaga. Rutabaga. I mean there's Google searches, so it has to be real. Roasted Rutabaga. Uh Rutabaga, sweet, sweet, or neat. 
is a root vegetable that originated as a cross between a cabbage and a turnip. It is sometimes also called a turnip. How... How... How can it be a cross between a cabbage and a turnip, but also just be called a turnip? You see what I'm saying here? There's some issues there. Uh, Pandora's box equals one free angel item. Again, just another way that we're just going to remain unkillable. But um, if... Like, it doesn't make any sense. If you... Oh, God. If you had a parent that was Caucasian and a parent that was Asian and so as a like as a child you would be like let's say that I'm not gonna go into like oh we're one fifteenth English and one nine thousandth uh French and blah no we're just gonna like basic races Caucasian and Asian if we go by that please stop if we go by that the child would technically be half Caucasian half Asian correct you wouldn't be like, uh, you know, this child is half Caucasian and half Asian, or you could just call them Asian. That doesn't make any sense, but that's what the rutabaga is saying is happening. It's saying, I am a cross between, like, get me out of this room. It's saying, I'm a cross between both a turnip and a cabbage, but you could just call me turnip. Like, what, what did the cabbage do? Was he like a bad dad or something? He doesn't pay child support? He left early on in his life? What did the cabbage do so that you can be like, mm, but really he's just a turnip? It's like, it's kind of like, oh my god, I thought he was going to be out of the room. Isn't it kind of like that? It, am I making a just a crazy, nonsensical analogy? Or do you get what I'm saying? I'm concerned for Rutabaga's childhood here. Okay, anyway. Let's go ahead and tank this. Go ahead and do this. Do this. Do as much damage as we can. Oh, beams of light. Do as much damage as we can. Once again, I think I'll probably just chill here and do as much as we can with Sack Dagger. Because, again, just so defensive that I don't know what we can do incorrectly. And Coding Overload, you want to go... I'm not going to turn down my video settings for you. I don't listen to the man. That's not what I do. Uh, Eden's Blessing at least means next run... I'm not going to say there's no way it's bad, but having one extra item over the course of the run certainly increases the chances that it's not bad. Uh, and so that's, uh, I didn't realize Lust was on my tail that entire time. Like he was inside of me for a while. That's okay though. Um, uh, Eden's Blessing at least means we'll probably, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, it increases the chances by, well, I, the stats are going to be way too hard because I don't know the proportion of quote unquote good items in the game, but just starting with two, three items instead of two items, we'll just pretend is a base 150% better chance to have a good item than normally because you're getting one extra, or I guess it's a 50% better chance, 100, I don't know. What I'm trying to say. We get one extra item. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. I really don't like these big L rooms. We could stop with these. Okay, if we could stop with these, that would be cool, I think. Get in there with Sack Dagger if we have to. Again, I don't think there's any chance we die. Uh, so, really, I just care about getting through this as quickly as humanly possible. The amount of large rooms I've seen on this floor thus far making me sick. Uh,. But it, you're definitely going to probably have a better chance than this one. Because yeah, I guess we did definitely get a damage upgrade with Horror of Babylon. But it took a long time before that finally came to fruition. We'd like that to not be the case in future runs if I could be so greedy. Which I hope you will allow me to be so greedy. Because, I don't know. I just feel like the, the, the crazy runs where you... I mean... Train wreck runs certainly have their fun. It is certainly fun to watch another human being suffer because I hold the Thomas Hobbesian point of view that all human beings are evil. And so I think that most human beings, at least not, maybe not in like real life, like I don't think people go around being like, ha, homeless person, cool. No, I don't really think of that. However, in a case like this, for someone who is an Isaac fan, I think people find some sort of sick fun in watching someone struggle with no damage for as long as possible. While I believe those have their fun, they're not as fun for me to record. And so I really prefer the ones where we just blow the doors off of everything. I know I haven't done Void in a while, but 
I got a tight schedule, man. We don't have time for Void all the time. That's going to be win number 9 plus 10. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys, I know it's 21. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you subscribe to become a citizen of Playcrastination today. And if you know anyone that you think would be a great Playcrastinator, go ahead and send them on by because we'd love to have them. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.